Look at the fluidity of that. Ain't a bam, never in its life. Hi, I hope you're all well. If you are new around here, hello. It's lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. My name's Alana. I'm a 36 year old lady living in Scotland. And on this channel, we predominantly talk all things beauty, skincare, hair care, lifestyle, travel, bloggery, vloggery, bullshit. But with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm, cynicism, and some might say honesty thrown in on top. I do also quite like the use of a sweary word. That's a curse word if you're not from around these parts. So if that's not your kind of thing, I completely understand. Or if you've got little ones running about and you don't want to hear the words I totally understand. Please feel free to vacate at any point. But if it does sound like your kind of thing and this video sounds like the kind of thing you're into, there's a subscription button in the corner. Give it a little click, give it a thumbs up, all that other YouTuber crap. Anyway, this video is going to be a monthly roundup, let's say for the month of July. We're in August now. Yeah, I had to fucking think about that there. I may have had these longer than the month of July, but we're just going to do a little roundup of things that I'm either absolutely loving at the moment or things that have really disappointed me. It's just going to be your classic faves and fail video. Grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, whatever the fuck you like, and let's just get into it. All right, so I'm going to start off with all kind of body skincare. Actually, do you know what I'm going to do? And I'm going to really regret saying this in editing, but I'm going to put up timestamps here of when everything starts because you might not want to watch everything. You might just want to see skincare. You might just want to see makeup. I'll put some timestamps here. I will regret that. But I'm going to start off with some skincare, stuff like that, body care, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll move on to makeup items. And I actually have a little bag to talk to you about as well. I'm going to start off with in shower items. Now, this is the Imperial Leather. Lather? Leather. It's leather as far as I'm concerned. Moisturising body wash. I have used Imperial Leather for years. I've spoken about them loads on this channel. It's been a while since I've had them on here. And the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I just picked this up. It's a big massive one. I think it was like a pound, a pound fifty or something in the supermarket. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is because it's cotton flower and vanilla orchid. It's not exact but this is very similar or has the same kind of notes, the same kind of idea as I would say glossy you. Now I'm smelling it and initially I was a little bit like, hmm, is there a little bit of fruitiness in there? Is there a little bit of citrus or something? When I was using it in the shower, it's very much that kind of comforting cotton scent. Not like the stuff you spray on your couch or Febreze, but like comforting like you've put a nice clean jumper on it's a cozy jumper it's came out the tumble dryer or something i don't have a tumble dryer but i imagine that <laughs> that might be what it's like and it's that kind of feeling when i've been using it in the shower i'm like this is fucking lovely i'm really enjoying it and i have to say for the size of it it's a 500 ml bottle for the price of it it's really good value as well like i'm down to heat on it at the moment i think it's brilliant as an everyday shower gel i've been really enjoying it it also lathers up really nicely it's kind of what does it say it says body wash it's not a gel i would say it's more like a cream almost it's nice it's very very nice and then from budget beauty end to super bougie end i picked this up in london and the reason i picked this up did i speak about this in my london vlog i don't know uh, i'll stick it up here if i did i don't remember sorry uh, this is the lalabo shower gel and this is the hinoinki one hinoinki i'm really sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong i will put the spelling of it here so you can see and tell me how badly i'm pronouncing that um and this is just absolutely gorgeous this is one that i tried must have been about nine or ten weeks pregnant when we went to London and the hotel we stayed at gave minis of these and I was like oh my god I need to buy that in a full size never ever did because I think it's like 25 quid a bottle 21 pound a bottle you can get this on cult beauty but I picked it up in Harrods and it's just such a beautiful smell I couldn't even really tell you what the smell is it's obviously Hanoinki but I don't know what that is exactly I'm reading the bottle and it doesn't have like notes of anything but it's just such an interesting scent. Almost a little like whiskey. Like there's a smoky feel to it. There's a smoky scent to it. But what it is, I don't know. I bet if you looked online, you'd find the notes to this and it'd be much distraught. Will I just do that for you? Fuck it, let's just do that. This video is gonna be super long. Strap yourself in. Uh, so I just Googled it there and it basically says it's extremely woodsy, cedar wood, hanoinky. I don't know if that is the plant um, or a tree. Fir, balsam with hints of sweet jasmine and spicy cardamom, which yeah, that all makes perfect sense to me as I smell it. Uh, I think Hanoiki is a tree actually, I've just seen that there, but it's gorgeous. It's a very pricey sour gel. I'm not saying that's what you're gonna be buying every month when your bottle runs out, but if you wanna treat yourself and those sound like your kind of notes, it's 
looking glorious. It's really nice. This is my fancy shower gel. So this one, this is my everyday. This one, if we're going somewhere nice, and it's funny because now as a toddler mum, I'm not really going anywhere nice, but the days I feel like, oh, maybe going somewhere, like I'm going to meet somebody like with my toddler, if I'm going to go and have a coffee or if I'm going to go and meet a friend or something, this is the one I'm wearing. Before I was a mum, if I was going out for a date with Alan or something, or if I was going to go out on an evening out, this would have been the one I would have worn on my non-working days, uh, but you get the gist of it. It's just a fancy one. I'm not saying you're using this every day, but it's fucking lovely. So moving on to, I was going to do skincare there, but let's do this one little body item first. This is the Superdrug Vitamin E All Over Body Cream, and this is the intensive one. Now, I am a CeraVe user through and through and have used it for years. If you look at all my kind of roundup, yearly roundups for skincare and stuff like that, CeraVe, the big tub of CeraVe is in it every single time. However, Rachel, who is called Blush and Sage, I believe, over on Instagram, I seen her speaking about this and I was like, hmm, okay. Basically, it's for dry to very dry skin. And she said it lasts forever. It's so nice. It's a 475 ml tub. It's cheaper. It's amazing. And I have to concur. It's fucking lovely. What I will say is, just in case someone doesn't love um, fragrance, this has a fragrance, whereas I would say the CeraVe one is pretty plain. There's nothing really in it. This definitely has a fragrance. I don't know what it is. It doesn't say on it, but it has shea butter cranberry oil in it. But there's definitely a fragrance there. Just in case you're someone who doesn't like that, for me, it doesn't bother me. And it's so thick and so creamy. Like, it's like never coming out of this tub. It's a super duper thick moisturizer. And I am really, really enjoying this at the moment. I will buy a second tub of that. And if they have offers on, like they do in Superdrug a lot of the time, maybe you'll be able to get like, buy one, get one half price, buy one, get one free. Am I going to ditch CeraVe? Hmm, I'm on the fence because it's really good. It's cheaper. I'm really enjoying it. And I actually really like the fragrance as well. So thank you to Rachel for putting me on to this. Um, and then... I don't have any more body stuff. I think that's it. Let's go into skincare. Uh, let's talk about this range. Now, I spoke about this briefly because this was sent to me via Community Scene. This is an aromatherapy associate kit, basically. It was a set. And it came with the Hydration Boost Mist. I think I feel like saying aromatherapy association. It's, there's a lot of fucking words here, not gonna lie. Uh, and it's also got the Nourishing Cleansing Balm. Now, I did bring the tub for the Cleansing Balm because we're gonna get into that. Uh, what I'm gonna say is, this Hydrating Mist, it comes in a glass bottle as well. It's bougie, it's nice. Uh, I love my Superdrug Hydrate one, the one that's cheap and cheerful. I also really like the Curel Mist. It's a little more expensive. This one is a little bit more in the bougie range. What I'm gonna say is, it's lovely. It's very, very nice. The sprayer is not the softest that I've had. It's a little aggressive, slightly, but not the most aggressive I've had either. You're not getting bukkake, but it is a little aggressive. What I enjoy about this is I really like the scent of this. Um, let me just read, does it tell me on the side here? Damask Rose, is it Damsk or Damask? Damask, we're going with that. Damask Rose Water, uh, known for helping with positivity and optimism and is boosted by niacinamide for firm and healthy skin, can be used over makeup. There is a scent in this though that I feel isn't rose. It's, it's definitely not, if I said, I was gonna to say to you, it smells like rose. That's what I would have done. There's something a little bit more medicinal, a little bit more maybe eucalyptus -y, like that kind of aromatherapy type of scent. Uh, and I really enjoy that. But again, if you're someone who's not into fragrance, then this might not be for you. However, I do think this is a lovely product. Now, the cleansing balm, as I said, we're gonna talk about this. This should not be called a cleansing balm. It is not a cleansing balm in any way, shape or form that I have ever seen cleansing balms in my life. No, no, sir. Uh, this, if you can, I don't know if you even see it, it's, it's greasy on the outside. The reason being, this is some sort of weird, like jelly, gel, liquid, cum, hybrid oil, right? It's almost dripping out the jar. Like I'm just turning the jar, you can see. That is not a cleansing balm. Look at the fluidity of that. Ain't a bam, never in its life. It's definitely more of like a gel, but it's too liquidy to be a jelly. Like, I don't know. It's got tiny little gritties in it, tiny ones. I've got oil all over my fingers now. Like, that's what I mean. It's got like an oil in it or something too. Um, 
And what I'm going to say is it works. It takes your makeup off. It's fine that way. But I just feel like it's a bit fiddly. Um, I do think it's nice. I think it's like, let me put it this way. I've said this a million times before. If you've been here a while, you will know. Cleansing balm, if it takes off your makeup, it's doing the fucking job. Whether it costs you 50 quid or it costs you five quid, it's doing the job. This does take makeup off. However, I just feel like I don't like the texture. It's a fiddly one. I'd rather just use a normal cleansing balm. I actually used up the mini of the super drug cleansing balm that everybody's kind of raving about at the moment. It's in my empties. I'll be doing a film. I'll be doing a video of that tomorrow or the next day. But fantastic for what fucking 4 99 or something like that maybe even cheaper than that but what i'm going to read to you off the side is what is kind of in this it basically says there's blue tansy which is a natural oil extracted from the blue tansy flower it's known for repairing nourishing soothing the properties of skin uh upcycled raspberry seed oil upcycled raspberry seed oil what does that mean i feel like now the wordage of things especially like clean beauty, you know how I feel about this. Uh, and this is a vegan product, I should say that. Uh, it also has a Leaping Bunny and B Certified? Certified B Corporation, I don't know what that means. Anyway, upcycled raspberry oil. Can it not just be raspberry seed oil? I don't know. Uh, it's an antioxidant to help promote regeneration for silky smooth skin. And it has squalene as well, which is an olive derived kind of oil. We've, we've talked about squalene before in this channel. Um, great, great. All good things, all great. Does it take your makeup off? Does it do the same as the one that's maybe costing you a fiver and super drug? Yes. Do you want to feel like a bougie bitch? Because it is, again, very highly scented. I feel like the scent between this one and the spray is ever so slightly different. I quite like the scent of this, if I'm honest with you. But the other thing is, see all those properties and things that says it's in it? You are going to be washing that off of your face. You're going to use it to melt all your makeup away and then you're going to rinse your face. So those properties are not going to be there. So... In a roundabout way, what I'm saying is, it's nice if you enjoy using it. If you really like the texture of it and the scent of it, then maybe this would be for you. Personally, I would just go with a cheap and cheerful cleanser. I, I just think it's a little overrated, and I do not like the texture of it whatsoever. Another couple of like skincare face things here. I bought this set to take away with me to go to London. It came with four little mini boosters. This is the Superdrug Me Plus range. Um, and this one is a hyaluronic acid booster. This one is niacinamide and zinc. Um, the other two, one is an SPF booster. What's the other one? Oh, an AHA, like an AHA, BHA type of thing. Uh, so I've not actually used the AHA or BHA. The SPF booster I've used once, give or take it. These I've been using a little bit more regularly. Uh, but what I'm going to say is I don't feel this niacinamide tops my niacinamide from the Inky List. I still prefer that. And the hyaluronic booster, it's 2% hyaluronic acid solution. It's nice, but what I've found is it doesn't play with all my other products fantastically. Some is fine, and other products, it pills a little bit. And I feel like the products that I'm using hadn't done that beforehand using my Isn't Tree one. So I do think it is this that is pilling. Um, it doesn't play very well with some SPFs that I've used, things like that. So for me, I probably wouldn't buy these in full size. It was nice to try the set. And this, like, as nice as my goes, this is nice. I just prefer the Inky List a little bit better. So that's a little roundup of them. I also am going to talk to you about this. This is from Corez. I don't speak about Corez on this channel very much because it's not something you can easily access here in the UK. I think they used to sell it in Tesco, but they don't anymore. You can obviously go online and pick it up, but you can't pick up like the full range. I actually picked this up when we went to Greece last year although i hadn't opened it and i checked on the side it was like a fucking six months lifespan so i've only just recently opened it uh, so i knew it was going to be fine and i have been making my way through it quite easily you can see there's a big chunk out of it there uh, i love this this is their greek yogurt comforting probiotic moisturizer it is so so nice if you can get your hands on it I highly recommend it for people who are normal, leaning to dry. And I've been using this in the summer months as well. I have recently just used up my Curel moisturizer as well. I was kind of using this one at night and that one during the day. I have now started using this one during the day and at night, so it will get used up nice and quickly. I think it's lovely. I think this range is lovely. I really like Corez and whenever I go to Greece, I do try and pick this up, but it isn't one that's readily accessible here. I'll have to check if it's on Look Fantastic actually. If it is, I'll link it down below. I have a code with Look Fantastic if you want to use it. It is an affiliate code, it's up to you. I bet you it won't even be on there. <laughs> It'll be pointless telling you, but it's so nice. And I think 
pretty sure you can still get Coreys in America. Still a pretty big brand over there and in Europe, definitely a big brand. But in the UK, just not as accessible as they used to be. But I really like this, it's so, so nice. Um, the other thing I was gonna to talk to you about is Dermatica. Again, I have an affiliate code with Dermatica. Um, they did send this to me as well, I should let you know. I've been using Dermatica now for over a year coming up in a year, but I did take a break back in January because I had a flare up of perioral dermatitis. They were really, really helpful with that. I found that the service has been great, really enjoyed the product. Um, yeah, can't say enough about them. As I say, I have an affiliate code. It's completely up to you if you wish to use it, but they sent this out to me just as a little like PR situation. And this is their SPF 50 photo damage defense sunscreen formulated with glycerin vitamin e and panthenol for hydration suitable for all skin types and can be worn under makeup absorbs damaging uv rays without leaving any greasy residue or white cast i really like this i think this is really nice it's on my vanity actually this is just the empty box that i was keeping to show you for the video but what i'm going to say is it says there it's suitable for all skin types I am normal leaning to dry. I think this is fantastic. It leaves me with a dewy, plump, glowy skin. It's gorgeous. With having the panthenol, glycerin, all that kind of stuff in it, it's right up my street. But I do feel if you're someone with greasy skin or you like a lighter SPF, this won't be for you. I'm letting you know that because I'm saying that as something, maybe you would try it and actually really enjoy it. So on your sale, it's fine. But I just think, I think this is really good and it is a little heavy but I like that because I have drier skin it leans to dry and I really like that glowy slightly sweaty look on my makeup as well so I like this under my makeup but just to give you a little heads up I think some people will try this and find that it's maybe a little too heavy for them I don't experience a white cast with this but obviously as you can see I'm as pale as a fucking ghost and I also feel like as well it doesn't take ages to like actually absorb into the skin you're not leaving like ooh, sometimes it's like you're putting a fucking emulsion on your face with SPF this does not do that does it top my Isn't Tree Watery Sun Gel? I would say for me personally, I like the both of them equally, but as an all-rounder, I would still suggest the Isn't Tree Watery Sun Gel because I think it's more suitable for all skin types, but I do really like this. This is very nice. Another quick thing also, this is the Garnier Micellar Water. Um, it is the rose water one, and it says it's for dull and sensitive skin. Now, I always usually buy this in the by phase one, like with the oil on the top and the water on the bottom. It used to say it was for aging skin, I think for marketing reasons they have changed that because now I think on that bottle potentially it says for dry skin but I couldn't get my hands on that one that day no tell a lie I could get my hands on that one that day but it was like seven fucking pound and this one was on offer for like four pound or three pound or something like that so I was like well we're gonna take this one for dull and sensitive skin and I thought well my skin is a little dry it says it's plus glow and actually I've really been enjoying it I think it's nice but I probably will go back to the by phase one I prefer that there's nothing wrong with this. I just, I just like, I'm just used to it. It's habit. I just like the bi-phase one, that's all. I also picked up these. I took these because I was wanting to take something with that, like being able to whiten your teeth situation, traveling a little bit easier than taking a train, all that kind of stuff. Um, and these, I think there's 56 dissolving strips in it. It says you're supposed to do it for, is it 14 days? Seven days, seven days. Uh, you put them on for 15 minutes. You don't need to peel them off. They just dissolve. <sighs> they do work but I prefer my other one. This is from Boots, I should have said that as well. The Boots Expert Whitening, but you get a little tray and you squeeze the stuff in. Yeah, it's a little bit more fiddly, but I do think it is more effective. Also, the dissolving aspect of this one, it's fine. It's just a little like, you feel like you've got something on your teeth. It's a little fucking weird. So I probably won't buy these again. I'm gonna use these up anyway. I, I've just been using them in the morning after I brush my teeth and it's fine. But I do prefer the other version of this, the tray instead. So if I was gonna to say to you, I would say pick up that one, this one, leave it at the door. All right, quickly, a couple of fragrances and then we are moving on to makeup. I told you this was gonna be a long one. So I spoke about this already. This is from Rituals and it is their Solai Door. It is a super duper summery scent. It's just the idea of summer. Like, I love it, the scent in the bottle. It's very fresh, it's very summery. Again, let me look up the notes on this one for you. So the main notes are floral, citrus. I think the floral though, it's a really fresh floral scent. So like, imagine like a day, it's not a rose. It's like a daisy. It's like fresh wild flower. Cause I'm not really into like big florally type of fragrances, like perfumey, florally fragrances. It's not really my thing. 
but it's also got citrus, aquatic, musky, ozonic. What's ozonic? Never fucking heard of that in my life. Fresh, spicy, and a little powdery. It's just lovely. It's really, really nice. It's just, it's like top notes, bergamot, pear, mandarin, middle notes are lotus and freesia. So that makes sense to me. That That's kind of more the flowers I was thinking of. And then the base notes are musk and cedar. So it has that slight woodsy scent, but it's just like summer in a ball. Absolutely gorgeous. So I finished this one up. This was one of the little mini ones that I got in a set. Finished that one up. Probably wouldn't buy a full size of it because as I say, it's not like a scent that I would wear every single day, but I would certainly buy another one next summer because I feel like it's a really beautiful summery scent. It's a very like, if you're out and the sun shines out, blah, blah, blah. It smells like beach. It smells like beach to me without it being coconuts and, you know, pina colada. It's just lovely, very nice scent. And this absolute fucking beauty right here. This is the Tom Ford Ebony or Ebene Fumé, I want to say in French, Ebene Fumé. Uh, Ebony fumes, I don't know, I do that. <laughs> don't fucking ask me. Anyway, I would never be able to buy, or I wouldn't be able to justify buying a Tom Ford perfume. They are very, very expensive. I have bought expensive perfumes before. The Loewe ones, for instance, are very pricey. But when you're looking at that level of fragrance, like designer fragrance, Tom Ford's not one I'm just going to be like coming in off the street being like, oh, I'll just pick up a Tom Ford. They are expensive. But my gorgeous friend, Sarah, who has done some work with Tom Ford, she had one of these because she was gifted to her and she didn't want it. And I had went into Harrods and she was like, oh my God, like tell me what Tom Ford scent you're looking at and tell me what one you like. And I sent her a picture being like, oh, I've just smelled this one. It's absolutely stunning. And it is so up my street. It's unbelievable. It's like woodsy, manly. Again, fragrances don't need to be male or female, but you get my gist. It smells a little more aftershavey than it does perfumey. Let me just look the notes of this one up. And actually it says here it is um, a fragrance for women and men when it was launched. So top notes, woodsy, amber, smoky, balsamic, warm and spicy, fresh spicy, aromatic and leather. It is just my idea of heaven in a bottle. And don't get me wrong, it is heavy. It is a heavy, heady fragrance. It's not like this one. It's not like light and fresh and fun. It's super duper heady. And basically, when I said to Sarah, oh, I've looked at this one, it's fucking lovely. I may treat myself. She messaged me back and said, do not fucking buy that because I have it and it's not my kind of fragrance and I'm going to give it to you. So she gave me a fucking full bottle and I was like, ah! It's just so very fucking kind of her. But also, because I'd never, I would never have like been able to buy this on the day. Like, it's gorgeous. If you are someone who likes those kind of fragrances and you're thinking you want a really nice Christmas or a birthday gift, maybe worth asking. If you can afford it, fucking go and buy it because it's gorgeous. But I get this is an expensive perfume and I did not pay for it with my own money. I was very lucky that I had someone who had it and didn't like the scent. It is oh sensational. Se sensational. Fucking full of puns today. All right, so moving on to makeup. I just wanted to have a little chat about this bag. Can you see it back here? Reason being, I spoke about this in my London vlog or at least my outfits thing. I picked this up from Parfois. They're a European brand, I believe, but I did not realize that you can buy from them in the UK as well. So I'm gonna link their site down below. I'm not affiliated to anything like that. I'm just so pleased that I can actually get my hands on some of their stuff because I think that their stuff, their accessories, think accessorized, right? It's like that. But I just think their stuff's a little more fucking interesting. It's a little fancier. I like it. And I think that they're well priced as well. So the reason I want to talk about this is because it's a big straw bag, obviously. But I kind of mentioned it comes with two smaller insert bags and a crossbody strap as well. So you can take this off and attach it to this little bag if you want to just take this out. This little bag here has a clip on the back of it as well. You can attach it to the bag, blah, blah, blah. So the reason I'm letting you know is because I put a video up, like a reel over on Instagram and so many people were like, where did you get that makeup bag? And I was like, it's part of a set. It's part of a bag. Uh, so in here you can see I've got like a little mirror, a little lip product. Uh, that is actually um, my jewelry, a little purse for my jewelry because we were away at the weekend and I put it in that. But this here, this bigger bag, I have all of my kind of must use or most used makeup for this month. So I took stuff away with the weekend and that's why it's all in there, but I also added in a few other bits that I've been using over the past month just to give you a little roundup. So we're gonna whiz through this because as I say, it's a long fucking video. Firstly, 
the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin and the Blurred Bam thing. Blurring Bam, uh, what are these called? Flushed, flushed blurring balm because these are coloured rather than the kind of translucent or skin tint ones. Uh, the skin serum tint, serum skin tint, fucking lovely. I have been using it as a base most of the time, not to work or anything like that, but most days. Uh, I don't have it on today, funnily enough, because it was in that bag and I thought put that to the side because I'm going to talk about it in a video. But it's so nice. I really like it. Again, if you're into that kind of almost dewy, sweaty glow, then you might really enjoy this. I have shade three. I would say two is a perfect match for me, being quite pale. It's a sheer enough coverage that it doesn't look odd when you've got a slightly, so you can kind of go between shades. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I could use two or three, but I prefer t three that gives me just a little bit more color, that's all. Uh, the Blurring Bam Flushed thing. I'm just, I'm gonna put the video up here, right? I don't need to tell you any more about these because I've put a whole video of like trying new products and these two were in it. I'm also going to say that video, I'm coming to you this week saying like, oh, these are my favourites. That was filmed like two, three weeks ago. So my apologies. It's been busy. It's been busy. I feel like I need to do a life update video because things have just been a little fucking heavy around here, if I'm honest with you. So love both of these. think they're fantastic. Have been using them so much. Also, the Tower 28 Make Lays Mascara. Perfection. I've been talking about this over on Instagram quite a lot. It is one that's kind of annoying because I think you have to buy it off Revolve here in the UK. I would love this to come to Cult Beauty. If this was available in Cult Beauty, I would buy like two tubes just to have backups. It's so good. It is what I've got on today as well. I'm pretty sure I've showed it over on Instagram a good few times. I compared it to the Lash E doll from Lancome. They are not the same. Uh, that was because somebody actually asked me. I would say the Lash E Doll is a lot like softer. It's got that kind of pull of the wing out at the edge type of shape to the mascara. This is big doll lashes. And I find that even though it's big doll lashes, it's not that horrible, clumpy spider eye way that I'm not really into. I hate the Benefit Bad Gal Bang mascara for that reason, just not into it. This, however, big doll lashes, but still nice and fanned out and separated. I don't find it spidery. It's gorgeous. I also picked up loads of milk products, as I say, are in that video, but now that I've been using them for a few weeks, let me just give you a little roundup of them. So, the baked bronzer here, you can see. This has been getting used to death. You can see it there. Like, it's been in my bag, I've been throwing it in places. Took it away with us at the weekend. It's fucking fantastic. I love it. I think it's really nice. Initially, I was a little like, is this too warm for me? Some people might argue with me that it is, but actually, once it's blended out, I think it gives a lovely look, and I have been wearing it almost every day I've worn makeup. I really, really like it. The blusher, I have actually got packed up to go away to somebody else because I just don't like it. And they'd watched my video and messaged me and I was like, fucking have it. Because it just wasn't impactful enough for me. It's just a little too soft for me. So if somebody else can get use out of it, that's why I've sent it on to someone. And then the highlighter is very nice too. Is it my favourite stick version of a highlighter? No. I prefer the Merit, I prefer the Glossier, I prefer even the Studio London one that's in like a pan, like the Danessa Duet Bams, those types of things. I prefer that. This is nice, but I just have others that I prefer. I wouldn't probably buy another one of these, but it's good. I like it. It's not got any faults to it. I just have others I prefer. The Kush Mascara, I liked the look of it in that video. That was my kind of first impression of it. I think it's nice. However, I did take this in my work bag for a few days on the trot and wore it and I do get panda eye with it. It does fall down my face a little bit uh, and I feel like it almost falls down my face and it's like as if I've been rubbing my eye. Like the lashes drop a little, but underneath you've got like pan. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't buy it again. And the Kush Clear Brow Gel. I I feel like this is a little bit of nothing. Like, I said that in that video as well. Like, is anything actually coming out here? Like, is there anything on the brush? And I've, like, been swirling it as well to make sure because sometimes when you get a mini, it's not as good as a full size or it's just not the same. And I'm kind of like, after trying this one, I certainly wouldn't want to try a full size one. But that's not to say that the full size isn't a nice product. I hear people rave about this. Personally, I think the one from Got To Be, the lashes, oh, lashes, talk shite, Alana, the brows and edges one that costs you like, I don't know, three pound in fucking Super Drugger Boots is 10 times better. If you want that laminated brow effect, you're gonna get that from the glued brows and edges from Got To Be. Uh, I don't like this full laminated brow effect. I like a bit more like up and fluff, 
but the glued one, like it keeps it glued. It keeps them in position. I think it's a great product. This doesn't have that. And I feel like considering the price of them and considering how much this is raved about, I prefer the got to be one. I think it's better. Um, this doesn't claim that it's supposed to be like glued and hold them up, but I just don't feel like it really does anything, if I'm honest with you. I could take or leave it. So as I was saying, I think everything else, the, oh no, talk, talk shite, Alana, talk shite. Uh, 1999 Beauty, this is one of their precision color pencils and I have the shade Maleg and it is stunning. It's so, so good. Uh, they have just released, I'm gonna put it here if you can see it, a yellow version. It's a limited edition one. I think it is called Karani or Karuni, something like that. Again, I'll put the name up because I probably totally butchered that. Um, it's, I need the yellow one. I need it. I really want to try Wasser as well. I think that's the blue one. I would quite like to get a neutral in it as well. These are not cheap. I did mention that in that video that these are more expensive. Can you get more budget friendly versions of bright liners like this? What I would say is really underrated and a fantastic range for bright liners are the Barry M High Viz liners. They're pencils, they are so, so vibrant and they go on so, so well. What I will say is I find that my Barry M ones just aren't as soft as this. Like the Barry M one I've used on my lips at times, like the pink one and things like that, to get a really interesting look, but they are, like they feel like you've got eyeliner on your lips, they feel a little dry. This is really good because I feel like it can be used all over. And therein is the kind of reasoning why this one is probably like at a higher end indie market and Barry M is the drugstore. But for the finish of it, if you're looking for impact and color, then the Barry M ones are up there. They probably don't have as a refined color palette as these ones. The Barry M ones have like lime green, bright blue, bright pink, purple, like they have all these kind of colors. But again, if you are looking for bright colored pencil liners, the Barry M one I'm gonna send you to because they are so cheap as chips and they are fucking fantastic. If you're looking for a pencil which you can use on lips, eyes, cheeks, all that kind of stuff. If you're someone who maybe is a makeup artist and you think, you know, I wanna be able to use this on the job, loads of different areas, and they are beautifully bright, amazing, don't transfer, all that kind of stuff. These are fucking fantastic too. Just depends on what you're looking for. Okay, so as I said, everything else I think is just stuff I already own and what I've been using this month. Um, Solar Flare from Bodyography, one of their glitter pigments, and Illusion. I have actually been using these two together because I feel like Solar Flare is a beautiful kind of pink, kind of warm, almost like it's got a little fire to it. It's a pink, but it's got a little heat in there. An illusion is like a gold with a pink through it when it does a little shifty situation. Both are gorgeous. I've been putting this one all over the lid and this one on like inner corner and highlight. I've just been using them for an all over shimmery look. Really, really enjoy them. Really, really like them. Have spoke about bodyography till I'm blue in the face and you will probably be sick of hearing about them, but I really, really like these glitter pigments. I also, on the days where I haven't been wearing the Danessa blush, I have been reaching for my Merit Persimmon because I just think it's fucking fantastic. I recently seen someone, I think it was Drew over at Baby Drew U, talking about cream blushes that she didn't rate and she put this one in there and the reason she didn't rate it was she felt like the colour didn't last long enough throughout the day. I would probably agree with her. This is one that will fade away quicker than that of other cream blushes that I have. But the reason I do like this is because it is so easy to throw it in my bag and I can just top up as and when I need it. And I really like that about it. I also really like the fact that like I can put it on my lips as well. It can be in my bag, throw it on, just freshen up a little bit and it gets all nice and dewy again. I think if you're someone who wears like either a heavy base or a foundation or a powder, then maybe that's not gonna be for you. But because I am none of those things, I still fucking really love this and I love the color of it as well. Uh, I also, on the days where I've not been wanting like orange or a bright color, uh, I've been using this from Sharon C, Oma by Sharon C, and this is, what is this called again? Audacity, I have spoke about this loads as well. Another cream blush, but I think it's an absolutely gorgeous color. Just a really nice neutral for me, to be honest with you. Now I'm just looking for kind of base products that I've been using. Uh, my glossy stretch, obviously, that's in here. It's never not in here, because I use it all the time. Um, my NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum Foundation, or whatever it's called, I'm making my way through that now. Probably about here, that's not bad out of that. And then my Merit uh, Minimalist stick as well. So I've been using that quite a lot as a little bit of a base if I'm using anything. Uh, I feel like this is something that if I want a little more heavy coverage than this, 
but I still really like this product. I think it's really nice. Uh, and then I've got my Glossier Wowder because if I am using a powder, it's gonna be this one. Uh, lip, oh no, talk shite, brow, another brow product from Merit. I've been using this consistently. It's the 1980 brow from Merit. And then lip products, let me just quickly tell you about these. Um, I find, have I just got the one in here? I've actually been using two Vive liners, but I can't see the other one in here. This is Rouge Rouge, which is slightly more pinky, like um, plum undertone, I would say. Uh, it's definitely warmer. The other one I've got is Rumour, which is like a 90s brown color, I would say. So I've been going between the two of them for lips. And then these are all the lip products. Oh, talk shite. This is not a lip product. Um, these are all the lip products that I've been using kind of on and off throughout the summer months. So, so the Glossier Ultra Lip in Villa. This has been an absolute favorite of mine now. Look, look how much has been used. You can see there, like that's it all the way down. If I start rolling it up, takes a while to get there. It has been well loved and well used. I absolutely adore this product. I think it is fantastic. I have been using my Vive, uh, what are these called? Satin Slip Lipsticks in Kink as well. As I say, I think this is a nice product. I don't knock it. I just kind of prefer the Glossy Ultra Lips. I don't know what it is about it, but I just like them a little better. But this is still very nice. I have also been using a lot more Vive stuff recently. I don't know why, I've just been reaching for this one. And this is Lara in the Modern Matte Lipstick. This one with that lip liner, the Rouge Rouge, perfection. I really like this. It's probably more of a autumn winter color for me. It's a little vampy. But I don't know, I was just feeling it for the last week or so and I've been putting it back on. I also have been topping most things with this from Vive and it is their Lip Dew. Um, I've got the colour Pesca, so it's like a little bit orangey. And the reason for that being is because sometimes I've been using this, the blush from Danessa, as a lip product. But I want it to have a little more feeling of comfort. So I'll just top it with this and it works fantastically. And finally, this from e.l.f. And this is one of their O-Face lipsticks and this is in Standing Ovation. And that is what I've got on today. It's just a really nice neutral for me. I wouldn't say it's nude, but it's a neutral colour for my skin tone. And I think these O-Face lipsticks are amazing. I've seen they've brought it out in a black. I very much feel like I need to own that, especially for Halloween. It's fucking lovely. Oh, and the other product that I had in my hand there is the Merit Day Glow Balm in Bounce. And this is one, unlike the Milk one, that I absolutely love. I think it's amazing. You just dot it on, spread it out all over your face. But that is where I'm gonna end this video because if I don't, my battery camera is flashing and I'm gonna get cut off any minute now. So if that happens, you know why. I hope you enjoyed this roundup. Let me know if you've tried any of these things. And if you have made it this far in the video, then leave me a little coffee cup emoji. That would be a nice one. And I will see you all again soon in the next one. Bye.